here we have another case um, with the upper premolar extraction which uh, were done in the past I'm not sure if it was an orthotic treatment here and it's a, a relapse or uh, there was no treatment uh, but the goal is to align the teeth um, without uh, any major movements here we have a picture of the patient so here we see despite the upper premolar extraction uh, the midline is uh, normally aligned so we just need to uh, fix this crowding as quick as possible we see pretty long roots here on the canines so we have to be accurate and slow enough with these movements uh, and let's start i always start with um, checking the axis of uh, the teeth of the virtual roots I set this point of view, uh, like the crucial point of view, and um, one by one checking the axis so that this um, mesial distal line goes parallel to the incisal edge uh, or to the central fossa and uh, the vestibular and um, lingual um, line should follow the crown anatomy of the crown because we will use this uh, axis as a reference for the movements now let's um, change the point of view and check the angulation of the roads so here i have two options if i want to make some stabilization or if i want to rotate the teeth and blah 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 i need to follow it um, i need to set the virtual root alongside the actual root but here i just want to expand it without any other movements that's why i ignore the anatomy and put this uh, axis this way so that this um, mesial distal um, axis parallel to the occlusal plane same for the rest posterior teeth Yeah, by looking at the axis of the posterior teeth i think uh it was an extraction but i'm not sure if, if here was um, some braces because of the axis we can see that all the crowns tipped uh, miselli the roots tipped distally it means uh, there was no steel and steel wire at least Maybe it was a quick, short treatment with extraction, but without stainless steel wire, I'm not, I don't know. And uh, now let's check uh, the final thing, uh, the torque. Uh, looks good, okay. Then we proceed to the lower jaw, do the same procedures, um, one by one clicking to all the teeth adjusting the axis I have to be very accurate uh, especially with insiders
There was no extraction on the lower jaw, <clears throat> so the roots are normally aligned. Uh, I don't see any crown root tipping. <clears throat> we can turn the ginger off so that we see the anatomy better. So we want the virtual root to go through the uh, middle of the anatomy of the actual root. And the last one is torque. Okay, then. So we always have to spend these five minutes uh, to adjust the roots after our technician. <clears throat> and now let's go to the virtual setup. <clears throat> I think we need just two layers. It should be a very simple case. Let's see. Uh, we'll start uh, with the lower jaw. Oh. Looks like I missed something very important. Yes, the rotation center is set in the crown. I don't know why. I guess my technician just forgot it and I missed it as well. So we have to set it here in the middle of the root. So it should look like this. It should be in the middle of the root so that our movements, our teeth movements, will be uh, more biomechanically correct. And what it is with the upper? The upper are uh, fine. Okay. We'll start to expand. Uh, use tipping movements. We don't need much expansion. You. No bodily movements, just uh, mesial distal tipping and uh, vestibular tipping and some rotation. We can move the second motors to the buckle direction because we just don't have enough force. So there are two options. We can just uh, leave them as they are, or we can add some lingual tipping so that the tension in the liner, uh, which we create with this, uh, it, have, it helps us to expand more efficiently. That is what I usually do for such uh, simple crowding cases. I distribute the space between all the incisors. I always uh, follow the numbers. Um, in my opinion, we have to rotate the, the insiders uh, all together with the uh, vestibular or lingual tipping so that the rotation doesn't uh, go too fast and uh, I never well I don't say I wouldn't say never but I try to keep um, this ratio so that the rotation doesn't exceed torque of course if you have uh, short roots or um, big crowns we can exceed it or we just um, limit it with a bone mm -hmm. but in general 
in general conditions I try to keep this ratio uh -huh, let's check if there are no uh, fenestration uh -huh. okay Now let's get to the upper jaw and do same. Rotate, expand, rotate, expand, expand, keep, rotate, expand. Personally, I like simple cases like this because we almost never need to make any refinements. They are technically easy. They are very well predictable. They don't need any auxiliary elements like buttons, chains, elastics, uh, mini screws, etc. They don't require any special plastic material like Zendura or Graphi. We can use the simple. We can use the simple. We can use cheap uh, PETG material. Okay, there are no complicated movements. Okay, then let's check the contacts. Um, we have some sagittal gap, which is fine. Let's reduce the quantity of aligners by reducing these movements. Okay. And we can add a palatal tipping on the second molars as well. Not much. Not to create some unnecessary tension. Well, let's create a new layer. Board jaws. And now we making the way back. Let's turn on the bone. It's very important here to control everything. Uh -huh. Here I use only the basic movements, keeping. Uh, we shouldn't put the canine too palatally. Not to lose the torque, we can combine the palatal translation with some intrusion. So that we have more chance, chances that uh, this movement will be not just a tipping, but uh, about the retraction. And then we're doing the way backwards for the lower anterior teeth. Let's see if we need some more lingual keeping. 
Yes, I think we do. So we need to increase the IPR, which is okay for this case. It's definitely an IPR case. Because when we fixed crowding with the liners, it's um, this about IPR. You never should never be afraid of IPR. You can safely do it for quite a big numbers. Like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 for uh, each contact is just fine. Sometimes we can go even more, but it's not necessary in the most cases. Sometimes we can combine the IPR with the digitalization. Well, let's check now. Yeah, I think we have... Yeah, there is some skeletal asymmetry. That's why we cannot get any symmetry here in the sagittal. I think it looks fine, and I would add some intrusion here. Oops. Yep. And I also recommend the doctor to, gri to grind these uh, incisal edges to make a uh, contouring so that they look um, better in terms of aesthetics. Oh, now it's time to turn the ginger on. And let's check if we need an overcorrection. I turn on the initial position, I turn on the final. And um, I check um, whether some tooth for the vestibular or more lingual and I do the opposite at the very final stage because the liners uh, don't work for 100% they always work for 80-90% so that's why we need to do it for 110 or something like that Let's turn in the gingiva for the upper jaw and check the correction as well. Yep. I think the central insiders require some. Some minor adjustments, closing the gaps which we could get from the expansion. Of course, it's a compromise case, so we cannot promise an ideal result because we have some similar skeletal symmetry, we have a extraction. But our goal was to uh, align the incisors, and here we also have a different height of the crown. Okay, let's, I don't know, let's leave it as they are and show it to the doctor and uh, listen what he says to us. Yeah. Now it's time to place the attachments. I will always start with placing the attachments for retention. I use this shape, uh, a bewilled, uh, bewilled spherical attachments. So I, I had an intrusion of uh, four incisors on the lower jaw, so I need at least four attachments uh, to have enough retention. Mm 
Should we place the attachments on the molars? I think, yes, we should bond them, but it's not necessary to bond them to the teeth if the liners fit well without these attachments. You just don't need to bond them, but if the liners fit loose on any of the molars, you can always bond these attachments. Sometimes you need one, sometimes you need two. It's uh, difficult to predict this. Uh, the liners fit uh, on the virtual models so that we just uh, make some overproduction and um, add the virtual attachments uh, onto the uh, molars. Um, don't forget to put the numbers. Always turn them to the base direction. This way. I uh, would also add the uh, oh, set for layers, upper and lower, and um, for the layer two here i would add those my favorite negative attachments to help the retraction so that it uh, should be more uh, more bodily rather than just the tipping We can use this rotation or torque to adjust the attachments to the surface of the tooth. Okay. Do we need any other negative attachments? Let's see. I think yes, we do. Especially, yeah, for these incisors. So we'll have the rotation, we'll have the vestibular tipping. And we probably should add it here. Ah, oh, no. No, 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 it's okay. Uh huh. Let's check the first layer on the upper jaw. Do we need some negative attachments? I think we should add one here. And one there. No. It's okay. We don't need any attachments on the canines because we don't rotate them. Here we have a 5 and 6 degrees rotation of the canines. Negative attachments should help these rotations. We need to check the direction. So here we make a mesial rotation, here we make a distal rotation. And that's why the position of the negative attachments are the position is different on the left and right side. And the final checking of the overcorrection. We can add an attachment here to make sure it this tooth goes to our 
your desired position. Okay, then. I think we're fine. And let's see how many liners do we need to make to let this case go. The crowns are pretty small, the roots are normal or even more than normal, uh, they're quite big, so I'll decrease the numbers down to 8, so that the distance is 0 0.18 on the layer 1, and at the second layer, the rotation is less than 1 degree, the intrusion is also small. So here we can go with um, 10. Hmm. I thought we going to have less than 18, but... Uh, I prefer to be uh, slow, um, slowly, goes, I prefer to um, use uh, safer numbers. And here, let's make nine. And uh, here we can decrease down to seven or even six. Because it's a lingual direction, it's much easier for liners to move the teeth to the lingual direction rather than to the vestibular. So here we can go with the six, yes. So it's 33 liners in total. Now we're going to check the animation. This is what I want to see. How the left insiders go distally so that there is no intersection between the central incisors yes there isn't forth and back By looking at the animation, I decided to add one more negative attachment. Guess where? I think we need to have this to rotate. Ah, I exceeded my numbers. The rotation goes too fast, so I decrease it down to 8 or 9. Uh-huh. And here we are the negative attachment. Mm. I don't like this shape. Let's try to adapt it.
and here also. Well, I think it's much better now. So we have more chances of this rotation to happen for the entire amount of degrees we planned. And now it's the time to upload it to the cloud and send it to our lovely customer. We go to our dashboard and wait until it's in the cloud. We refresh the page. And now we get a we get an online link so that we can send it to our doctor or patient and they open this link they can see the setup from any mobile device or desktop device it's super convenient so it's uh, one of the reasons i'm why i'm a huge fan of maestro 3d And this is the setup uploaded to the cloud. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.